Hello and welcome. I'm Sarah Hyland, and you may have noticed that I am a lady. And this is Lady Parts, a show that talks about everything we normally don't talk about. You know, sex, female pleasure, breasts, hormones, pregnancies, orgasms, vaginas, and even some So to all who identify as a lady, let's get to know your parts. Here to discuss is our wonderful Lady Parts OBGYN, Dr. Sherry. Hey, hey! And please welcome this week's guest, the hilarious comedian and actress, Tiffany Haddish. Hey! Today we discuss the taboos, stigmas, and myths surrounding women's health and sexuality. We have to change, change all this conversation about the vagina. We have to ask the questions, we have to feel empowered, and that's what we're doing with Lady Parts. Why do you think that women's vaginas aren't talked about enough? I think women have a hard time talking about their vagina because it's not talked about. You know, it's always like, who's got the biggest D? You know what I'm saying? Who got that D? Like, where that D at? But nobody's like, who's got the tightest, smallest JJ? Who cuckoo is like, bam! Who got the crunchy that make you go crazy? Like, nobody's talking about that. Also, vagina sounds like a state. It doesn't sound like a place that's like, ooh, I wanna be at vagina. I personally love the word vagina and I love talking about vaginas, obviously. What are your favorite vagina slang terms? I like saying the JJ. I love saying cuckoo because it make the boys go crazy. <laughs> when I'm at the doctor's office, I be like, my vaginal area. <laughs> It's because I feel like when I talk to the doctor, I got to say I'm kind of smart. It's my coochie. It's important. I wouldn't be offended if you called it a cooch in front of my presence. <laughs> Why do you think that breasts are easier for women to talk about and society in general to talk about more than vaginas? Men have breasts, so, and I think men wish they breasts did what our breasts do, but theirs don't. So, haha. <laughs> I mean, why they got nipples? You know what I'm saying? Cause they vaginas fell out, that's why. <laughs> you know, most people like to sexualize breasts and they're very complicated, but very powerful. Kind of like cucumbers. Yeah, well, yeah, one way to think <laughs> about it. <laughs> cucumbers can be erotic. I've been watching food porn, but doesn't the vagina kind of look like a snail or <laughs> like an upside down snail? I mean, it's a beautiful thing. I think so too. Doctor, can I ask you something? Why every time after I work out, my cuckoo smell like an In-N-Out burger? Did you have In-N-Out the night before, a double-double, Tiffany? No, no, but I haven't had a double-double in a month, and I've been thinking about it every day, so I'm wondering, is it my thoughts? What you put in your body, it comes out in every fluid, every orifice, and yes, the taste and smell of the vagina. So you gotta really look at what you've been eating. Tiffany, how did you learn about your body growing up. So my grandma, she taught me that don't let people put their hands down there if their hands ain't clean mm -hmm. because you'll be itching and scratching. Dirty nails, dirty D, get that thing away from me. That's what she taught me. You were lucky to be raised by such a smart woman and such an open woman. We're talking about so many at-home remedies for vaginal health right now. Let's talk a little bit more on that with myths and urban legends. Do you think your vagina can get looser from too much sex? Or how about from a big partner? I don't think it can get looser because it's going to swell up, but it's definitely <laughs> going to get tilted if it's too big. Tilted. <laughs> I feel like for me, I'm, I'm a very tiny person. I feel like the vagina grows and then shrinks again. You know, you go through like a dry spell and then the dry spell's broken, you're like, oh wow, this seems like it's the very beginning. It's like a rubber band. It's yes. It's like a rubber band. It got that stretch to it, then it snapped right back to its normal size, but it never, see, it kind of, it kind of get a little twisty. So if your man has a big, thick penis and you're having a lot of sex, it can actually make the tissue in the opening a little looser. Oh, it can make it looser. You mean this is too big for me? No, I not mean. <laughs> Speaking of size, do you think size matters? I don't think so, I don't think so at all. I remember I had this one penis that was so big, I threw up afterwards because my uterus, something was wrong. I go to the doctor, <laughs> she's like, your uterus is tilted, it's knocked out of place. So I had to do all these exercises. 
try to get it back in place. The Kegels. Now, I personally yeah, prefer yeah. something like this, you know, like uh, right, right, right in here. I like that. I like, you know, right to my G spot. All that extra stuff. That's that's a waste of elasticity to get to my G spot. That's yep. about three inches in. Don't try to knock my cervix out of place. You know, don't. <laughs> Don't open up. I don't want to be dilated. I don't want to go to get my pap smear and the doctor's like, you're four centimeters. Like, what the hell? I should be close. <laughs> Do you guys think that women can just orgasm purely from penetration? I feel like for most women, and they're ashamed to say that, pure just penetration just doesn't do it orgasm wise. It's 100% true, Sarah. I mean, most women, they want a talented tongue on their clitoris to have an orgasm. And a talented tongue. Only 25% of women will have an orgasm during vaginal penetration without touching the clitoris. The man has to have hair above his penis. You gotta have- It creates that friction. Yeah, that's the French tickler. So when he inside, then you you know, you humping back, then that's hitting your clit, then it's like, BAM! You get both ways. <laughs> do you think that you, I'm asking for a friend, but like, do you think you can over masturbate? I think if you use the wrong power tools too much, it can desensitize you when you get to your, your man. From my experience. Yeah. Or what do you think about bringing some of that high vibration into sex with your man? That's fun. There you go. That's there the you go. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> yes, that makes that wow. Pure perfection. That is <laughs> exactly what rocks yeah. my socks it off. It is. That, that makes you have that map. Like Erica Badu say, that map. That magical ass Do you think you should have foreplay every time? Warm it up, warm it up. You can't just jump on in and don't get the engine started. That's gonna, That's how you tear your walls up and everything. That's what make it not good. That's how you be sore the next day. You gotta stretch that elastic a little bit. Yeah! I don't know about you guys, but I definitely feel like I've been led astray by women's magazines in the past. So I'm going to read a real sex tip from a women's magazine, and you'll decide if it's one, sound advice, or two, you'll admit if you have actually tried it. Tickle his feet with your nipples. Climb on top of him in reverse cowgirl position, then bend over until your nipples reach the top of his feet. That's how you get athlete's nipple. I ain't doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't doing that. You should use your electric toothbrush or your iPhone when your vibrator is out of batteries. I'm leaving on that one now! True story, I had a patient who said the new generation iPhones were great to masturbate with because they had a higher vibration. That's a real expensive vibrator. I mean, that would be so weird. You got your phone right there and somebody call you and you were just about to come, you're like, damn. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not gonna do it. That means it's time for another refreshing fact from Refresh. Garlic, oil of oregano, yogurt. If you don't think you should put it up there, you probably shouldn't. Use Refresh Odor Eliminating Gel to help maintain a healthy vaginal pH, eliminate feminine odor, and relieve feminine discomfort. I'm gonna play another game, and this is <laughs> TMI Can Answer That For You. If a guy or girl isn't giving you what you want and need in bed, do you tell them? Yes. David, I've told you several times, and that's why I don't sleep with you no more. <laughs> you can't go so deep. Just right in the shallow part. That's where it's good at. I told you that many times. You never listen. Have you ever faked an orgasm? Yeah. I think every woman has, right? Yeah, it's pretty universal. If he be dripping sweat, that's when you be like, let me hurry up and fake this, because I don't want him dripping on me no more. Ew. Men have faked orgasm too. I think it's like 36% of men have also faked an orgasm at least once. Men fake orgasms? How do they fake it? Yeah, they go, <laughs> and then they hurry up and get up and run to the bathroom. There's nothing like in they it. they did something, but they didn't do nothing. There's nothing there. It's like. It's all about communication with your partner. You have to talk about your preferences, what you like, what you don't like, and you got to do it from the beginning. Dr. Sherry, Tiffany, thank you so much for joining me. Dr. Dr. Ross, wh where are you located? Because I'm, I'm looking for a new- Oh, uh, come see uh, me, yeah. We got to talk about vaginas, and then you get a gynecologist out of it. Hey. I love it. It'd be, it'd be my honor, thank you. Tune in next week for more information you didn't know you needed or frankly wanted about your lady parts. <laughs> <laughs>